It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, oh, here's one. I think you know the answer to this. Oh, gosh. I think I know the answer. Good. You can be my backstop. I hope we know the answer. Uh, this is from Will. Uh, he's a financial question. Awesome. This is a financial show. It's a good place to ask one of those. <laughs> what does a church have to do to allow members to contribute using QCDs, Qualified Charitable Distributions? Well, first, I think it'd be helpful to hear, what is a Qualified Charitable Distribution? Well, a Qualified Charitable Distribution, this is a great planning technique for clients, because we all know one of the things you're going to find, we talk about tax location a lot mm-hmm. on our show, is that because there is a tendency for our, my hyper savers out there, you're going to have a lot of tax deferred accounts. You're going to have big 401ks, big 403bs, big IRAs, that are going to build up. The problem is, and this just got updated, um, was that you have a required minimum distribution at age 72. Mm -hmm. So the government makes you start pulling money out based upon your life expectancy so they can collect income taxes on that money. So what QCD, Qualified Charitable Distributions, allows you to do is you can actually take a portion, you can distribute directly from your retirement accounts to the qualified charity, meaning you you actually fill out the distribution paperwork, then but have the money go directly to the charity instead of to you. So that's a big setup. Is just make sure your 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 church knows. Hey, you got a check distribution check coming to you. Sometimes the paperwork from your custodian that provides the that that holds your IRAs will be a little weird. So it is going to require you to have better record keeping sure. because your distribution might. You know, your 1099-R at the end of the year might have that number in there, so you need to make sure that you can separate that out. But a lot of you guys, because here's the thing, you're going to say, well, wait a minute, if this shows up, why would I do this? Because if it went directly to them, and and, because it doesn't show up as like on a Schedule A as a charitable Mm -hmm. distribution, but what it does do is you don't actually pay the income. You don't have to recognize. Remember, if the government is making you pull this money out of your retirement account, but you you have a portion go to your charity, you're not going to pay income tax on that portion that went to the charity. And you're probably like, well, but why is that a big deal? Here's why this is a huge deal. Also realize when you're since you're over 65, uh, and, you know you're gonna have probably Social Security coming in. You're gonna have Medicare that you're on Medicare for, for your health insurance because you won't have that income in your camp because it went directly to the church. Your taxability on your Social Security could go down. That's right. The premiums you pay on your Medicare could be impacted and make them go lower. Yep. There's some really good side benefits, and it lets you check the box on your charitable desires. Uh, to answer your question about what does the church need to do, to my knowledge, nothing, because what happens is they actually just get a check, just like any other check. All your church has to do is be willing to accept a check from a financial institution. So that's pretty low maintenance there in order for them to be able to receive that. You, as the individual, though, do need to check you some boxes. You need to check the boxes. Because like I said, that 1099-R could come out at the end of the year. The QCD might not be highlighted. So you need to make sure you're telling your tax preparer how this deal was structured so that um, it doesn't happen. It doesn't get screwed up. I see, see you're throwing me off there with this whole moving forward and backwards. 